In this video, we'll continue to discuss arithmetic operations by taking a look at multiplying values. The idea of multiplying values is generally going to be done in two different ways. The first way would be using the MUL, or multiply instruction. And this instruction is going to work primarily with unsigned values, whereas we have another option, IMUL, which works with signed values. And I'll show you how each of these are going to interact with different values and the different ways that we are going to be able to set up both signed and unsigned multiplication, and what that really means for our applications as we're developing them. So let's start off with a really simple example. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move some data into AL. And I'm going to move some data into BL. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply AL by BL. Now, the multiply instruction is very interesting. It doesn't require me to provide two operands, like the uh, add or subtract operations. Instead, it only requires one operand. The one operand is going to be one of the numbers that we're multiplying, specifically the one that is not stored in the A register. So in this case, that would be BL. The reason for this is because the multiplication instruction automatically applies multiplication using the A register and then whatever other register is provided. The reason for this is because the A register is actually a special purpose register. It's typically referred to, I believe, as an accumulator. And generally, it's used in certain operations like multiplication as the default destination for the operation. So in general, with multiplication, the main thing to remember is that you only provide one operand, the operand being the number that you want to multiply by the A register. The result of this instruction is that BL, which is 3, gets multiplied by AL, which is 2. Let's take a look at what that looks like, make sure that this is actually true. So I'll just go ahead and assemble, link, and, and uh, debug my program. So we're going to layout ASM. We'll break at start. Oops. So we'll break at underscore start. We'll run, and then we'll just step through each of these instructions. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the AL register. You'll see that it has the value of 6. So again, what happened here was that BL3 got multiplied by AL2, and the result got stored in AL, which is 6. So this is a really simple example of multiplication. Now, there's a few other interesting details that we should discuss. One of those things is going to be what happens if the result of the multiplication is larger than the register. We saw this type of idea with addition, where we would add two numbers together, but the result was bigger than the actual register that we were working with. In this case, we have an 8-bit register, AL. We have the largest possible 8-bit number stored in it, and I'm going to multiply it by 2, which will clearly create something much bigger than the actual register size. Let's take a look at what happens. We're going to go ahead and compile this, set it all together, we'll go to our ASM layouts and break at start. And we're going to go ahead and run, and then step I through it. After the multiplication happens, what we can do is we can take a look at the info for the register, in this case, AL would be the one that we're looking at. Now, notice that you get the value negative 2, and that seems not quite right, of course, because that wouldn't be the result of this multiplication. But what's interesting about this is that it wasn't set to 0, right, which we saw with the addition example. So because of that, maybe we should take a look at one of our other registers, right? So we could take a look at AH, for instance, which has a value of 1 inside of it. And then we could combine them together and say, let's take a look at AX. And here, we'll actually see the result of our multiplication. We had, I think, FF is 255 times 2, which would make 510. So do you see that it actually expanded the size of the destination in order to fit the result of the multiplication? This is something that the multiplication operand will do for you. It will actually expand the destination to make it large enough to fit whatever value you're trying to store in it. In this case, it expanded it from AL to AX to be able to store the full number that we were working with. So this is a really important difference between multiplication and addition. With addition, we had to consider what would happen if we were to add a value that became too big for the register. With multiplication, this is done for us. It will actually expand that out for us. So this is something that's really helpful to keep in mind as we're working through with the actual ideas of multiplication. So understanding that, we can take a look at one final thing, which is signed multiplication. 
Now, sign multiplication is really interesting because of the way that it treats the values that we're working with. So I'm just gonna add in my interrupt here just because I realized that I forgot it. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and compile this together. We're gonna to see what happens when we multiply these two values together. Now, I want you to think about what would happen or what you would believe would happen if we were to treat these as signed values. Keep in mind this value in particular, what would this be as a signed integer? That's what I really want you to think about when we're putting this example together. So just consider what that value is going to be. When we take a look at the layout ASM, we'll actually see pretty quickly the value that we're going to have. So in the previous example, when we assumed that these were unsigned, this had a value of 255, right? So that was the value of FF. Now, when we take a look at this actually through GDB, take a look at AL, do you see how it sets it to the value of negative one? To understand that, you have to just consider the way that the complements work in terms of negative numbers. The way that we would represent negative one in its complement form would be all ones, or in this case, FF. So that's why this is represented as negative one. Now what happens is the next value is two. It doesn't have any sign to it. It's not in any sort of complement form. So what we have is we have two multiplied by negative one. When we step into the next instruction and we take a look at the register AL, do you see that we get the value negative two? So you can see that that actually did the multiplication assuming that AL was negative one. So it assumed that it was a negative number. So this hopefully helps to highlight the differences between the signed version of this multiplication and the unsigned version. The signed version assumes the value is negative two, the, or sorry, negative one rather. The unsigned version is going to assume that the value is 255. So it varies the way that we're actually interpreting the value based on the operand that we're actually using. So just to give you a bit more of an intuition around the idea of multiplying numbers. So multiplication has a lot of interesting differences to it compared to our other arithmetic operators. And the next thing that we'll talk a bit about is division. And we'll see that division has some similar types of ideas related to multiplication, specifically in the way of having a signed and unsigned version of division as well. So with that, you should now have a better understanding of multiplication and the IML instruction as well. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.